Welcome to CEO Check-In and happy spring. It finally feels like spring a little bit here in New York. I got to go out for a run for the first time in what feels like months, was probably just weeks. So I hope wherever you are, spring is sprunging a little bit too. Uh, hi, Erin. Hi, Rabia. I'm so excited to bring on my guest today, Erin Coles. She is the founder, co-founder of Pro Arts and also manages the band Met Players and is just an incredible member of the Million Dollar Women community, a dear friend, a leader, has super strong mindset practices she's going to share with us and I just cannot wait for this conversation. So let's get this going. I'm going to start with my go big tip and then we're going to bring Erin on. So the go big tip today is learn to make a decision. Often entrepreneurs think making no decision is a good way to avoid spending money or avoid making a mistake. But in fact, one of the top skills of high performing CEOs is the ability to make a decision. So do your research, weigh your pros and cons, but then trust your intuition and make a decision. If I could tell my earlier self, any one piece of advice, it would be to trust my intuition more. I think as women, we sometimes second guess ourselves way too much. And I'd love you to learn to learn to make a decision and trust your intuition. Because the worst thing you could do for your business is to just not decide. Also, when you talk to high performing CEOs, that's all they do all day long is make big decisions, right? Should we spend $10,000 on these Facebook ads? Should we spend $5,000 on this trade show? Should I hire this new person? And you really don't have 24 hours to think these things over and do all the research and have everything all buttoned up. So I'll be curious what Erin thinks of this, but I think this is one of the top pieces of advice you need to follow if you wanna scale your business and go big. All right, now I'm so excited to bring on Erin. Erin, why don't you just make a little request and I will bring you on here. Um, if you just click on my name at the top, it should give you the option of request to join. And then I will bring you on. And many of you know Erin. Erin has been involved in the Million Dollar Women community from pretty much day one. She is on our board of the Million Dollar Women Fund. She's the Vice Chair of the Leadership Council, and she's also active in the We Are Women Owned community. Hello, Erin. Hi, how are you? I'm great. So good to see you today. Good. So good to see you too, always. I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. And I thought we both went running. I saw in your story that you went running today too. How was yeah. it? I, I went running yesterday. I didn't go today. I was like, I have to focus on getting ready for this, but it was beautiful. I mean, thank goodness it's getting nicer again. So I, know. Nice. I saw it on your story, so I thought it was today, but I guess it was <laughs> leftover from yesterday. It was leftover from yesterday. <laughs> I'm an afternoon runner for sure. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I'm the morning runner. Yep. <laughs> Mine was like at 7 a.m., but I'm so glad you got outside. And I'm just so excited for our conversation today so that people can learn more about your journey some of your mindset practices, where things are going at pro arts and with the Met players. But let me just tee it up by saying, you know, when the pandemic hit and so many businesses were affected, you know, I immediately thought of you because one of the first things that went away was live events. Yeah. And you are in the sending wedding bands to weddings business. And, you know, I always like to say there is no great wedding without a great wedding band. And that's where you guys come in. But of course, during the pandemic, we also found out there are no wedding bands without weddings, right? Like your business just <laughs> screeched to a halt. Yep. <laughs> and it's such credit to you that you stayed positive. You found ways to get through that time. So I'm excited, you know, to dig into some of that today so people can learn from your powerful mindset. But first, let's just back up. I know that you did mm -hmm. not set out to be a business person. You were like a psychology and theater arts major. <laughs> take, us, take us back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, wh well, what I wanted to be growing up was a Broadway performer. That was what I wanted to do. Um, and once I sort of started realizing the reality of what that would look like if I actually were to do that and how I'd, you know, be in a line with a hundred other girls that looked exactly like me and I didn't know how to dance, I was like, there's no way. I'm going to, I want like more stability. So I ended up going to school for theater. And for business, I got two degrees with a minor in pre-creative arts therapy, so psychology. Um, and I met my husband, my now husband, when I was in college. 
And as soon as I was finished, I moved to New York. He had already moved here. Um, and so I got a job as a personal assistant, you know, a very New York job to get when you get here. I didn't uh, know that was your first job here. I, I, I learned a lot about you and you and Drew in that great New York Times piece that they just did on you guys. But that tidbit wasn't in there. Who's it assistant wasn't in were there. you? <laughs> Who's assistant were you? I gotta know. <laughs> but yeah, I started out as a personal assistant and, you know, was doing someone else's laundry and all that fun stuff. Um, and well, you know, I, I was I a worked. nanny. I wrote all about that in Million Dollar Women. So I'm, I'm yep. right there with you. Who was you, it? Was it, you like a, was it like a celebrity or was it just a regular person? It was, he was a business owner actually. So it was for a company that did like voice coaching and speech coaching. So um, oh, okay. I worked for one of the owners of that company, but it was, it was interesting. And we were, you know, planning our wedding at the same time. And that's sort of how this whole thing started my business is that as we were planning our wedding, um, both my husband Drew and I are performers, musicians. And so the band was like number one on our list. We knew that we wanted a fantastic band with all the bells and whistles. And as we were- How hard for could a... that be, right? You're right. Probably like, like, that'll be so easy. It must be. <laughs> Um, but we really couldn't find one. We were getting married in upstate New York and to bring a New York band up there, it was more expensive. And we just like couldn't find the perfect thing that fit in our budget that also had all the things we wanted. So Drew said to me, he's like, hey, why don't we start our own band and then do it for other people too? So we can like, you know, do this for a year, year and a half before we actually get married ourselves so we can, you know, get our feet wet. And I was like, sure, let's do it. I, I had no objections because I had no idea what it would look like to own a business. Um, I'm glad I that I did. A, a great know. example of trusting your intuition and making yes. a decision, right? You're exactly. Like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it started. So we, about a year and a half before we actually got married ourselves, we, uh, we decided to start a company and grow this band and did odd Auditions and made a website and the whole thing and just started building it from the ground up. That's amazing. And I love how far you've taken it. Give us a little sense of what Pro Arts looks like today. Yeah. So uh, the main component of Pro Arts is our wedding band, the Metropolitan Players. And um, that it went from one band of about eight people to now we manage about 50 musicians under our umbrella and we work as a collective. So all of our musicians are trained exactly the same way with the same repertoire. So everyone is basically interchangeable. Uh, so no matter who is at a wedding or a performance, the quality, the sound, the songs we play, all of that will be exactly the same. That's fantastic. And it's and it's very niche in a way, right? Because yeah. it's like people who are looking for what what who's like your perfect customer? Tell us what that's like. Yeah, I mean, our, our perfect customer is someone who wants to have an amazing party and wants all their guests to dance all night and leave with unforgettable memories. I mean, that's huge to us is just like creating those memories on the dance floor. This is like a one day that will never happen again. You know, it's one event where all these people are in a room together, um, dancing and having a great time. And you'll never have that same group of people together again. So it's really, really magical and special. And so um, it's our goal to create that awesome environment for people to leave with those unforgettable memories. So if somebody is interested in that, that's the right kind of person. Um, so I love that. And I've, I've seen so it. many people posting on social media about what an incredible time they had at their wedding, thanks to what you did for them. And it's even in this crazy COVID time where some people have had to have much smaller weddings than they anticipate and change all their plans. You know, the, the joy and the love and the amazing music that you guys bring, I think has, you know, really elevated their wedding. So I know yeah. there are a lot of people watching who are very grateful to you. <laughs> <laughs> for that. But from a business perspective, I'd be curious, what was like a big moment where you made a decision since that was the go big tip today um, to scale or to right? Because this could have stayed very small. Lots of people have bands and play at weddings. But you were like, No, this is a business. Tell us a little bit about how that evolved. Yeah, I mean, there are a few key moments. And I would say, number one, both my husband and I went to get our MBAs. So we went through the same MBA program that was very entrepreneurial focused. And one of our uh, professors actually, this was at the very beginning of our business when we had one band. She was like, you know, you're gonna have a ceiling to how far you can go if you stick with just this one band. Like you, you can replicate this. Like once you figure out the foundation of how it works, you can do this over and over and over again. And so that was a huge catalyst in us growing it the way that we did and creating it as a collective so that we could do, 
if we had the ability to do more than one event in a day if we wanted to. So it sort of grew our base quite a bit. So that was really exciting and a huge catalyst in us growing. Um, another is uh, we actually had two sort of businesses we were running under our company. One was a live band karaoke for summer camps. And I remember that. Yes. <laughs> I remember talking with you about that. Yes. The karaoke yeah. I mean, it feels karaoke. like forever ago now, but we realized that like, it just wasn't making money and we were losing more money out of it than we were uh, gaining. And it was really difficult to scale that aspect of our company. So we ended up closing that part down, which, you know, at the moment was, it was bittersweet. It was like such a beautiful, wonderful thing that we were doing, but it also was not good for the health of our business. So we decided to close that down. There's another decision for your go big. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> and you know, you know, in our community, we're always trying to help women to figure out how to scale their businesses yeah. faster. And sometimes that does mean stopping doing something that you really love, yeah. you know, and that can be hard. But if you look at the numbers, right, we always say the numbers don't lie. Yeah, right? like how many of this can you actually deliver? How much time and energy is it taking? Are you marketing to a whole different population, right? In your case, mm -hmm. it was a whole different market, right? A so it wasn't market. just sending out other bands, it was also having a whole different marketing strategy. So yeah. I know you made the right decision, even though that was probably hard to do. How do you trust your intuition for someone who's at home watching thinking, yeah, I, I'm not always that good at trusting my intuition. What do you draw from in those moments to go like, yeah, I'm going to do this? Um, that's a great question. I, I'm not sure I have a great answer to it. I think that uh, what with the business partner, what has happened over the years is that when any of us, either of us have a feeling about something that like, it's a good idea or it isn't, um, the, I know the first step for me was always to be like, Hey, I don't think this is a good idea. And I wasn't very good about backing it up with numbers. And so actually the, the, um, the rockstar camp, the summer camp band was the first time that I was like, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't, I don't think it's going in the right direction. And then I, I took that and like actually broke down the cost and the numbers and the margins and all of that and realized that it wasn't working and then presented that to my partner, Drew, my husband. Uh, so I think that like, that is something I learned over time is that it, you don't have to do that. If you don't have a partner, you can just trust your intuition. Um, but if you do, or you have to prove something to someone that was really helpful for me to learn is that even if I had the feeling it was good to verify that by numbers or, or whatever. Yes. I, I, you know, and even people who don't have a partner, right? I don't have a business partner, but every time I make a big decision, I do, you know, an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet yeah. to just crunch the numbers because I kind of feel like, well, if it doesn't make sense to me, if I can't convince myself through the numbers, <laughs> then maybe True. it's just wishful thinking, right? Yeah. yeah. So what was another big scaling moment? I'm curious because after you got rid of Rockstar the Camp, yeah. Rockstar Camp? Yeah, Rockstar Camp. <laughs> okay. So then what happened? Like, was there any positive impact for the business? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that was a piece of the puzzle. And the the third piece that I wanted to share is million dollar women, like a 100% was one of the biggest reasons why we were able to scale and where why we are where we are today. And so that I was introduced to you in 2017. So that was five years ago now, which is really wild every time we think I know, about it. right? We just had that five year anniversary. And we I met at a, a, I think I was doing a workshop on negotiation. Yes. I don't even do those very often. So it was yeah, fortuitous. <laughs> it was so perfect. So perfect. But I, I was at a point where I was really burnt out from the business. And I just didn't know what to do. We were just like pedal to the metal working all the time, like no breaks running these two parts of our business. And just like, that was it was just exhausting. And so as soon as I met you, I was at the point where I was like, do I even want to continue running this business? Or do I want to like get a job that's stable and just like let that be what it will be. And at once I went to the summit for the first time, my whole like everything changed. And then I took the master class and that even added on to it. Um, and I learned some really important pieces like uh, productizing our services. That was one of the biggest things that really helped us scale. Um, which essentially rather than just willy nilly sending out numbers and saying, this is what we charge. We created three separate packages that really uh, were very, you know, they, they were around things that people needed for their wedding. So included different facets of their wedding ceremony, cocktail hour, reception music, 
Um, and that and if I really may, that helps you grow your business, but I think it also probably helped your customer, right? Because having been yeah. the person trying to get a wedding band when I got married, it was like, oh my God, all these things to think about. I don't know what I need. So if it's just three different options, do you feel like that, that your customers yeah. actually like that better too? Oh yeah, it was so helpful. And like for us too, a lot of what we built our business around was what we didn't like throughout the wedding planning process from our <laughs> vendors. And one of those things was that in wedding businesses, a lot of times you'll have all of these prices that are pieced out in little pieces. So every single thing costs an extra dollar amount. And that was so frustrating to us. And so the packages were a perfect way to help us like pull it together and say like, this is actually what you're going to pay. You're not going to pay all of these little tiny amounts for all of these. Oh gosh, things. I'm sure your wedding couples love that because you're just being love like, it. you know, nickel and dime to death when you do a wedding, right? Every single yeah. thing you plan is like, oh, you want nameplates at the tables? Well, that's going to be another yeah. thousand dollars, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> so that was a really, that was a really powerful thing to learn. Um, I also learned from the summit about a CRM system, which I had never used before. As a personal assistant, I didn't have the opportunity to do that. I, I bet you're now life. outsourcing a lot of the things he outsourced to you. That's the funny thought I was having, yes. right? That you're now the person with the personal, you may not have a personal assistant, but you have a lot of help. Yes. And you learned to outsource and delegate. So it's yep. actually, the circle has come full circle a little bit. Almost. It has. <laughs> it that. has. And that's so true. I mean, between that, like, the CRM system that helped us keep all of our clients organized and make sure that we were following up with people and no one was falling through the cracks. We also, that saved me a lot of time, which allowed me to focus on other things. And then yes, hire people and have, that was one of the biggest things about masterclass that helped us scale too, was one of our projects was to hire someone. Um, and so we did, and that really helped take a lot of things off of my plate. And I'm very thankful for that. Now I just took a week off last week, as you know. And I know, so I'm going to see that. And so did anything important. go wrong in the business? We're dying No, nothing went Yay! wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mandy, because she was awesome. My awesome. <laughs> rinse and repeat. Rinse yeah. and repeat, right? <laughs> next, next time, take two weeks off. You know, I sometimes take my kids to Europe for like three yep. weeks. And I'll delete my email from my phone because I don't trust myself not to look at the work email. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever I come back, there, there are no fires to put out. Yeah. The team has done an amazing job, right? Sometimes it's just up to us to set up those systems and like let go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm so glad. How did it feel to be on vacation and know the business was still up and running and doing fine? It was great. It really was. I mean, it was weird. It was the first time I actually took off without looking at my inbox every day and trying to check in. Um, so it was it was almost like a struggle all week for me not to I know it's in. hard to break that habit, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I need I need to do this a few more times to break that habit. But it was it was really great. And I feel far more energized coming back now because I've just had some time to let my brain take a break from the day to day. So it was it was definitely important and I would very highly encourage anybody who needs a break to take it because it will absolutely help. Well, because it helps your mental health, but here's the secret. It helps your business, right? Because yes. we can't come up with the big ideas when we're so running on that entrepreneur hamster wheel mm -hmm. and we can't get that clarity that you can get from when you step away. So I'm excited yeah. to see what'll come out of this. But you know, you mentioned the Million Dollar Women community and thank you, you know, it's, we love having you as such an active member. You're on the Million Dollar Women Fund board, raising funds for our scholarships. You're the vice chair of our leadership council. So <laughs> why do you get so involved in communities? It's not just ours, you're in, you know, we are women owned as well. How does that feed you on a personal or professional level? Because someone could do what you do and not be part of communities. Why, why do you seek that out? Yeah, I, that's a good question. I mean, I think I've always gravitated towards being in leadership positions of communities I'm a part of just because I love to be a part of making it better and brighter and reaching more people. Like, that's just really, really exciting to me. Um, but also, I mean, the connections I'm able to make, the things I'm able to learn just from being a part of these organizations is so helpful. Um, I have I have so greatly benefited from all of the people that I've met in Million Dollar Women from you, which I'm like, 
over the moon grateful for you. Well, like, our friendship is so dear to me. So, you know, <laughs> yes. it started out just like, okay, I'm your coach, but now we've yeah. become friends and I just treasure our friendship. So thank you for saying yeah. that. Yeah. Right it's back at so you. powerful. <laughs> and also like on that note, just as an extension of your question to sort of get into that mindset space of the community is that having people that are going through the same thing as me has like changed my world. And I think that at that point that I originally met you back in 2017, one of the reasons I was thinking of stepping away from my business is because I didn't have that support system. I didn't have anyone I could call and say, hey, this is really difficult for me. Can you please help me through this thing? Or, or I didn't have someone like you who saw that I was going through a you know, crazy mindset moment and you called me and you're like, hey, here's how I can help. Um, I just didn't have that. And so I think that's another big- It can be lonely. It can be very lonely as an entrepreneur. I know so it was for lonely. me, yes. Yeah. Even though you know, you've got your team you're managing, you've got your clients you love, but at the end of the day, everyone's looking to you, right? To have all the answers and it can be very lonely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And so that community has just been huge for me. And through the pandemic, uh, we have this group of how many is it eight of us or I can't remember. Yeah, I think we're eight in the, in the unicorns. I was just yes. posting about that on, on that. Well, we haven't even said happy, you know, Women's History Month. So happy yes. Women's History Month. But yeah, a year ago on International Women's Day, we all had brunch at my house. And you all didn't even really know each other that well. I knew each of you very well. But then everyone really bonded that day in a way that, you know, often happens when you pull amazing women together. Yeah. And then here, you tell the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, days later, everything shut down. We were hoping to see each other again. And so it was we decided that we would just meet every two weeks during the whole pandemic. And now we meet every, no, we on met Zoom. every week. Let's just say on Zoom. Zoom. On Zoom. <laughs> yes. On Zoom. <laughs> yes. We were very safe. Um, but it was every week during the pandemic. And now every other week we continue to meet. And uh, it's just become such an incredible support system. I mean, we talk about everything from our business to personal challenges and, and are able to help each other through it. And it was, I mean, one of the biggest reasons I think all of us were able to get through the pandemic with such a strong mindset because we had that really, really strong support system that was always there to lift us up and help us with any challenges. A hundred percent. And, you know, for me, it was a game changer. But I also think it's like it's like a micro version of what we're doing on a macro level in Million Dollar Women, because yeah. in our community, we have so many women who are just total rock stars growing their businesses, mm -hmm. but they don't know many women like them. Right. Yeah. And I think running with other high growth women entrepreneurs is is a game changer. And so, yeah. you know, thank you for acknowledging the role that's played in your life. So let's get into some of the mindset stuff. You, you and I love to geek out on this. So <laughs> what role does that play in you growing your business? Like, can you separate out like I'm a business person and I have mindset practices or do you think that they're actually interconnected? Oh, they're so interconnected. That's like the easiest question to answer. That was like a tee up. <laughs> tee up for you. Thank you. How are they interconnected, Erin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was at we were just on a clubhouse room yesterday, and I'll give that example to start. Is that I. I started journaling every morning um, and I also do a gratitude journal every night, which was a gift from Julia the day of International Women's Day last year. So a year ago, I started this. And it's a big book, right? So you haven't filled it yet, I bet. I, I have not yeah, filled it yet. The one I have, it like, takes about two years to get through it. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. It's amazing. And I think that that's one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle is just like in the morning, I get all of my personal thoughts out of the way, anything I'm frustrated with, like the fact that I am frustrated doing the dishes or something, like whatever, it's gone. It's in, it's in the book and it's away. How and long does that take for someone listening who's like, oh, I wouldn't have time to do that, to write it yeah. out? How long does it take? I mean, I do three pages of um, just like stream of consciousness. So it usually takes me like, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on right. what That's I'm writing long. about. So it's not too long. I mean, you can do one page, just get it out like that. It's called so morning cool. pages, right? And that's a thing. I've yeah. heard of that. Do, do you remember yeah. where you learned it? Just out of yeah. geeky, geeky curiosity? <laughs> yeah, it's from artist pages or yeah, the artist way, the artist way. That's what it is. I've, I've heard, heard of that. Yes, the artist way. Yeah. 
The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. So it's um, it's it essentially helps you tap into your creativity and, and set really realistic goals. It's a really wonderful book, um, but the morning pages are part of that. And so I do that. And then the gratitude journal every night and that sort of just focusing on that gratitude practice and really just helps put you in the right mindset to be looking at the positives in life and not focusing on the negatives, which is another mindset thing that you taught me, which is one of the stories that we tell all the time, um, which is when the post-it was, note. We want to hear about the post-it the post note. note. <laughs> we were going through, I was going through a really difficult time in our business and also personally. And so I was just like, not in a good place and bookings were coming, were not coming in. Um, and it was, a weird season where it was just, it was just difficult financially and personally and everything. And um, you called me up and you were like, I want you to take out a post-it note and write down, focus on what you want. And I did, and I put it up and I stuck it on my wall. It was there for two years. And um, it was just a really good reminder because I was focusing on all the bad things that were happening. I was focusing on the negative and the bookings not coming in. And so and that's just a downward spiral. We've all been oh, there, right? When you start going down that rabbit hole and it's like another thing that's not working and another thing that's not working. Yep. <laughs> and the next thing you yep. know, you can't see anything else. So yeah. what was one thing you actually changed? Like for someone listening who's like, yeah, post-it note, whatever. You know? <laughs> like <laughs> right. what, what is something you did differently once you looked at that post-it note? Yeah, I mean, I looked at that post-it note every day and I it reminded me to look at what I could do with what I had and what decisions I could make to grow our business. And so um, I decided to, of the example you have in your book, Go Big Now, which I definitely encourage everybody to purchase. It's coming out at the end of this month. Um, I'm excited. I'm so happy I got to share your story under a slight yes. pseudonym, but I think people will figure it out. <laughs> people will figure it out. But, <laughs> but the example you used in the, in the book is one of them, which is I... Uh, I hadn't in a while reached back out to some of our past couples to get testimonials from them. And so I did that. I reached back out to them. And not only was I able to then use those testimonials and post them publicly on our page, on our Instagram, I all it also was just a like reminder of why we do what we do and how wonderful the moments are that we help create, which reminded me of all the things and why I wanted more couples to experience this. And it just got me in a better, in a better place all around to just like move forward and find other ways to get more bookings in the door. And then inevitably because of that change, they picked up and things got back to a really good place. I love that story. And it was such a great example of when you focus on the positive, it generates more positive, but it's yeah. not some woo woo law of attraction thing because when you're feeling energized and when you're in that happy place, you make different decisions. You take different actions, right? I mean, I'll share, can I share a little story from my life? Because this just sure. happened this morning. I've yeah. been meaning to do something like a Facebook group around the new book, Go Big Now. But every time I thought about it, I was like, oh, God, one more thing to do. Like, no, I'm too tired. I can't deal with it. And then I went for this great run this morning out in the sun. I came back. I was in a great mood. I was dancing around to music. And I just like popped into that Facebook group, wrote a big note to everybody, like renamed it, sent it to my entire team, right? And so... Sometimes you just have to get, not sometimes, I think all the time, you have to get into your good state before yeah. you can do the big work. And once you shifted your energy, so many great things happen. And it wasn't just the feeling, it was business, right? Like yeah. you actually got new business too. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was huge. And I, and I remember that every day. And that's one of the things that keeps me strong every day outside of the community and everything else is just remembering like, as soon as I get that negative thought, I like take it and I put it away and I think, okay, what could go right? Or like, what, what do I want? And how can I make that happen? And it definitely has a huge impact on growing our business and just me being happier in general too, which then, like you said, helps you make better and brighter decisions. And have more creative thoughts, right? I yeah. mean, you're a creative person as a musician and someone who's, you know, been in musical theater. You know that when you're feeling joyful, right, you create, you sing, you write things, you have great ideas. So this is all so cool. And if anybody's just joining us, this is Erin Coles. She is the co-founder of Pro Arts and also has Met Players, which is this amazing band that gets sent out to weddings all over the New York tri-state area. You manage about 50 bands, you said. I think you used 50 to do about 150 musicians. And you used to do like 150 weddings a year. Is, is that about Not right? quite. I think okay. our most You're was about- Okay, you're going to. You're going to. <laughs> We're going to get there. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think our most was about 85 or so in a year. 
Right. But now with the pandemic finally, you know, getting past the quarantine and people getting vaccinated, I think we're going to see so many weddings, right? Have you guys gotten busy again? Yeah, yes. I mean, people are still a little cautious and unsure about this year. So we're still in that like, kind of on pause territory. Uh, but we thankfully, we work in an industry where people do plan several years in advance sometimes. So we have bookings for 2022 and 2023. And I think with Amazing. the vaccine rollout going pretty well, I mean, there are they have there are some kinks, but it's going well enough that I think people are pretty confident about things picking up. So our, our next couple of years are going to be very busy, but that's very exciting. Actually. And I think everybody's ready to dance and party. So that yes. is where you come in. Oh my right? God. I mean, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think I might have to come to some of your weddings, just like sneak in, just so oh, I can please. dance more. <laughs> I miss dancing. We weddings. all need it. <laughs> and so out of curiosity, what were a couple of mindset things that you used during the quarantine? Because, you know, in, in your field, which is events at the end of the day, right, it just all disappeared overnight, right? You woke up one day and it was like, no more phone calls, no more emails. I just want people to try to picture this, right? And so what I often say about mindset is we know our lives are not going to be perfect. We know things are going to go wrong. So why don't we build up the skills, right, the mindset core strength to be ready for those moments? And so I'm curious, what did you draw on in like the darkest times of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I... I think it's more of the same because I think that one mindset of like focus on what you want, that one tip has just carried me through everything. But that was what I did is I, I thought like, okay, no one knows what's going on. No one knows when we're going to be back to normal. Um, so I can only do what I can do. And what I'm going to try to do is focus on how I can help our couples through this time. And so we just made a bunch of things like we did, um, PDF documents that were helpful, like how to plan your wedding during COVID and uh, videos of wedding planning tips. And we put together Spotify playlists for inspiration. We did a lot of like back end work. We also oh focused God, a little bit on SOPs, I'm sure they love that. I'm sure you had, you know, people reaching out yeah. to you saying, we love this, you're helping us. And then you were, of course, top of mind for them when they were ready yeah. to actually plan the wedding. Exactly. And on top of that, we also we were like, well, if we can't do what we normally do, what can we do? Uh, and we decided to create smaller bands for our couples that were deciding to get married during the pandemic and had smaller weddings and really needed to downsize. So we just sort of like flipped everything over and let it be what it was and, and took it, you know, tried to just stay positive and take things one day at a time and one step at a time. Um, and not let all of the uncertainty overwhelm us. It was more like, let's just do what we can and let it be what it will be and plan for the future and know that it will get better at some point. I love that. And that is the go big mindset is, you know, it's a set of beliefs that allows you to stay positive and overcome obstacles so you can still reach your goals. And sometimes the goals shift a little, right? I mean, we all mm -hmm. had to kind of lower expectations for revenues in 2020, right? Yeah. It was yes. less about, okay, how much money are we gonna make? But how can we just keep serving our clients and customers in the highest possible way, which it sounds yeah. like you really did. What was one decision you made, since that's kind of a theme today, one decision you made during uh, the quarantine about your business that, that you could share with people watching? Yeah, um, I, I think, the first one that comes to mind is just the fact that I I decided that the pandemic was not going to slow down our overall goals. And so rather than like trying to scale back and like do way less, what I did is I was like, let me try to keep our employees working. I gave them new projects and through doing that was able to promote our VA to take care of now all of our client relationships. Um, and so now she's in charge of that. And it's like, I think that that was a huge decision that was like, I'm not going to take this and say, okay, now I have to do everything because we're at a pandemic. It was like, no, I'm going to keep moving forward, keep delegating and keep pushing things in the right direction so that we don't lose that momentum during this year. Wow. What an amazing decision that led to so many good things for your company. I love yeah. that. Thank you. And where is Pro Arts going now? What's, what's coming up next for you guys? Yeah, I, we're just going to continue to grow. I mean, we're in the process now where we're 
slowly inching our pricing forward uh, to get us more into the luxury wedding market, which will help our margins and help us hire more and just be able to uh, produce more amazing content for our couples. So that's the goal over the next couple of years is, is sort of inch towards that line um, so we can really just continue to provide awesome music for weddings. Fantastic. And we will all be here cheering you on in the Million Dollar <laughs> Women community. And thank you for always giving back so much. You're always the first person to put your hand up to say, well, I can help with that. <laughs> and you send the best emails with the emojis. <laughs> keeping us all organized so thank you for that <laughs> and just for being such an inspiration to everyone in our community and to me personally so thank you for coming on today of i adore course. you where should people follow you you have a couple of different instagrams where should they go yes yeah. so my personal instagram is the one i'm mm -hmm. on right now which is at aaron.coles and then the best instagram to follow for our business is at met players so metropolitan players is the name so just take out the politan it's met players <laughs> met players all right so you yep. can find think of the met museum right Met yes. players and i had the pleasure at being at one of your events uh, well, that was about a year ago too because it was before lockdown whose birthday was that was that yours or drew oh or? My, yeah me and drew are both it was actually his birthday but we were both turning 30 so it was a joint that's birthday right that party. was so much fun i got to hear <laughs> met players play they were amazing so i can definitely recommend you guys you know with full joy anybody should hire you for their <laughs> wedding if they're, if they're looking for a great band um so thank you for sharing your entrepreneurial journey and your mindset practices with us today that was so much fun and i look forward to seeing you very soon in person we're gonna make it yes. happen Someday yes. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. I'm so happy to chat with you today. This was awesome. And one more plug for your book because I have to make it on your behalf. Go oh. Big Now. It's being released right end of this month, March 31st. Is that March right? 30th. Absolutely. Yep. 30th. March 30th. March 30th. Um, you can pre-order it now on Amazon, which I would definitely recommend you do. It is so good. I had the pleasure of reading um, an advanced copy of it, so I would highly recommend it. Please order. <laughs> Aaron, thank you so much. And you can look for Aaron's story in there. That's like the Easter egg in the book. <laughs> Not that hard to find. <laughs> See if you um, can find it. <laughs> well, you know, really Go Big Now is like a love letter to our community of Million Dollar Women because I got to share your story, so many other stories. And, you know, the whole reason to become a mindset coach is to help incredible women women like you with your go big mindset. But I think I'm going to kind of check the box on you. I think you've got it. <laughs> I'm moving on to the next person. You've got, you've got your go big mindset. I have the best teacher. <laughs> You're awesome. Have a great day, Erin. And we will talk thank very you. soon. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. And uh, thank you all for joining us for CEO Check-In. I look forward to seeing you again next week. We have some amazing guests coming up. So please keep tuning in Wednesdays at noon. We've reached out to some of our past keynote speakers from the Million Dollar Women's Summit, and they're going to be coming on. I hope you enjoyed Aaron's interview as much as I did. There's so many golden nuggets in there to help you build your business and your go big mindset, which, of course, they are intertwined, as Aaron talked about, and as I talk about in Go Big Now. Have an amazing day. Thank you for coming on. Rabia, Kigley, Edwin, Post of Insta, Grande. Wow, so many cool people. Nicole, uh, Informa Viajatrice. So good to have this time with you. See you next week. Stay brave and go big. <laughs>